Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show that covers all things marketing. The GSMC Marketing News Podcast gives you the latest marketing news, from what major businesses have planned for the coming year, to the newest trends in advertising, from podcasts, digital and streaming, to the old standbys of radio, television, and billboards. Whether you're a marketing agent or a business trying to expand your brand, you've come to the right place. The GSMC Marketing News Podcast starts now. Hello again, friend, and welcome back to the GSMC Marketing Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. How is everyone doing this Monday morning or afternoon or night? I'm not sure when you're listening to this, but I know it's a Monday, and I know Mondays are tough. I mean, to quote Garfield, I hate Mondays too, but Mondays can be a little bit more simple and a little bit more special if you have something to look forward to. And for many of us, including myself, something that I look forward to every single Monday is when a new episode of my favorite TV show comes out. Now, over the years, that has changed which TV show It went from being Desperate Housewives, to being Gossip Girl, to being 90210, to Grey's Anatomy and Community. Either way, television shows are marketed towards that feeling of comfort and that feeling of engagement. How exactly are those big television companies able to pull off such dramatic and interactive marketing strategies, and how can you, a small business owner or someone who perhaps just works in marketing, pull off the same level of effect with your own marketing strategy? That is what we are going to talk about on today's episode of the GSMC Marketing Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mackenzie Jaquish, that is M-A-C-K-E-N-Z-I-E, J-A-Q-U-I-S-H. Please follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. I have a YouTube channel. My name is the same across all of the platforms, so please head over there and check me out. And while you're on social media, make sure you check out the GSMC Marketing Podcast social media. Guys, we have so much fun content coming your way that you aren't going to believe it. We're really, we're stepping up our game. We want to make the GSMC Marketing Podcast a place where you can interact with us, you can ask us questions, and you can learn something that maybe you didn't know before. We want it to be a fun, fun experience for everyone involved. So please head over there and get to know us a little bit better by following, and then let us know you a little bit better by sending us a message with who you are, where you listen from, and what your marketing company is all about. But let's jump into today's episode. So on today's episode, we are going to be talking about television marketing. We've all fallen a slave to it, and we all have gotten used to it as being just a part of our lives. Now, television marketing definitely had to take a bit of a turn a few decades ago when people stopped watching TV on TV networks. Instead, those networks had to find a way to advertise their television shows to people who no longer owned cable or only had streaming services. I am one of those people included. I mean, I have Netflix and Crave and HBO and Prime. I have all of the streaming services, but I don't have cable TV. So, How do I see commercials? Netflix doesn't exactly do commercials for their shows. Neither does Amazon or any of those. You may see an ad for it on YouTube, but that brings me to my point, is that they are no longer relying on commercials to broadcast their product and to promote their product. Instead, they are using social media and a few other strategies that we'll dive into today. So get your pen and paper ready because we are jumping right in with a few examples of how television shows have used alternative forms of marketing to promote their show. Number one, 
Pretty Little Liars. Pretty Little Liars was a huge show and a huge step in the way of marketing from a platform that had nothing to do with commercials or the old traditional way of marketing your TV show. Instead, they were one of the first TV shows to really, really utilize social media and to use their fan base to promote the show themselves. So they generated over 256 million engagements across various social media platforms. And this was largely due to the cast. Every cast member played a huge part in making sure that the show was promoted and advertised to the recommendations of the studio and of the marketing team that the studio hired. Characters on the show would interact with their social media fan base as if they were real. The actors who portrayed the characters constantly talked about the show and the characters and the plot lines. You were able to interact with the show even when a new episode wasn't due to come out for a couple months or even a full year when they were on break. So they really utilized social media to connect with their audience and a big reason for that was because the Pretty Little Liars audience They were quite young. They were teenagers or preteen girls who were interested in the show. And the best way to reach that audience at the time was through social media. Number two, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is a huge show in this category because, guys, they had to keep people interested when they took years in between filming and they made huge decisions and had to keep a lot of things quiet. So if you're trying to keep things quiet, you don't want to show a sneak peek. You don't want to keep updating people on Instagram and on social media. Then how do you keep people interested? And they did something that we'll definitely talk about more in detail after the break as a strategy for you to use, but they did publicity stunts constantly. One of the most recognizable one would be the bus size dragon skull that they put on a beach in some other country. I think they put it in Ireland and they let people find it and it was a way to promote the show without giving anything away of what was going to happen in the new season. Number three, The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead was a great show. I am not denying that. Please do not come at me by saying any of this. I understand that The Walking Dead fan base is huge and they definitely have strong opinions and strong feelings about the show. However, the reason I believe that they have such strong feelings and such strong emotions about the television show is because of the amount of work that went into promoting the merchandise for the show. So how can you tell if a Walking Dead fan is a Walking Dead fan? They'll be wearing a shirt that says The Walking Dead, or they'll have a keychain, or they'll have a bottle of whiskey, or they'll have a hat, or they'll have a machete, or they'll be playing the video game, or they'll have a photo from when they rode the ride at Universal Studios. Guys, The Walking Dead was huge on their merchandise game. The show itself was great and drew an audience, but... They had so much going for them in terms of actual tangible goods that people could buy and then promote for the show. And I mean, the show's over now, but you can still go to any Walmart in the country and see at least five people wearing a Walking Dead shirt. I would pay anybody the cost of one Walking Dead shirt if you go to a Walmart right now and you do not see anyone wearing a Walking Dead piece of merchandise. Guys, it is simply everywhere. Number four, Rick and Morty. First of all, for all you Dan Harmon fans out there, give yourself a pat on the back because normally he does not succumb to those more obvious marketing types. I mean, you'll never see a community t-shirt or anything like that, or at least you won't see it as much as you'll see the Walking Dead merchandise. However, for Rick and Morty, They used social media and sneak peek features to promote the show. So on Adult Swim, they took a common yet equally effective approach by marketing a 15-second clip on their social media page of the episode before it ever went live. They did this repeatedly to sort of gain attention from a new audience that they hadn't reached yet and say, hey, the show is coming out. Do you think you will be interested? Do you want to know more? And because people got so used to seeing it so much, they were then suddenly very, very excited when the show actually came out. Now, this is interesting because you're probably asking me, hey, Mackenzie, 
Isn't that just a commercial? Yes, absolutely that is just a commercial. I am not arguing that that is a commercial. But the truth is, is that commercials have had to change over the past couple of years and adapt to a new format. And the new format, simply put, is social media. Number five, The Tonight Show with James Corden. So James Corden has had to compete with some of the biggest names in The Tonight Show world. He has Jimmy Fallon, Jimmy Kimmel, um, the Stephen Colbert show. He has so many shows and now Lily saying, how would he even start to compete with all of those huge names in entertainment? Well, he says that it's him being genuine. I say it's social media. With over 10 million subscribers on the James Corden Tonight YouTube page, they really do have an ability to market to an audience that is only on social media. And they make sure that all of their segments fit within the social media world rather than the other shows that focus on TV first and social media second. Okay, everyone, we are going to go ahead and take a short break from the podcast. But when we come back, we are going to talk about some of those marketing strategies that we just learned about and how you can use them in your own marketing. So stay tuned for more of the GSMC Marketing Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mackenzie Jaquish, and I'll be right back. Golden State Media Concepts Technology Podcast covers everything tech. The hottest mobile phones, tablets, games. We review it, rate it, test it. Whether you're Microsoft or Apple, Android or iPhone, we'll give it to you again and again. Black and white. The Golden State Media Concepts Technology Podcast. everyone and welcome back to the GSMC Marketing Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. How is everyone doing today? Guys, I'm not going to lie. My back hurts. My hair is a mess. My face is a mess. I ate an, almost an entire bag of salt and vinegar chips while recording this podcast episode for you guys today. Times are it's not that times are stressful. It's that it's hard to feel motivated and it's hard to feel like you are doing the right things because sometimes it's hard to see the progress and what you are doing. And I just wanted to jump on here. We're going to get into the rest of the podcast episode. Don't worry. But I wanted to remind everyone that what you are doing, it is helping you. All the marketing strategies we talk about on this show all the time you spend listening and working through and developing new marketing strategies with this podcast, it is paying off. I know you might not see the results you're expecting right away, or perhaps you're not seeing any results at all, and that is an extremely frustrating situation. But I'm here to tell you that it's not something you're going to be stuck in forever. I promise, promise you that. You're going to find the success. You are working hard, and I am so proud of you. And if you want to show your appreciation for how proud you are of me for hosting this podcast every week, why don't you go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Guys, you subscribing, I don't, I say this every week. You know what I'm going to say. It helps us so much, way more than you could expect. It is not just a number. It is not just a view count. It helps us know who you are, what you're listening to, and what what and how we can better be a better podcast for you. So please help us out, extend that olive branch, and connect with us through the podcast because every subscription really does help us understand our audience and our product a little bit more. But let's talk about today's subject. We are talking about TV marketing, which, guys, I know you're aware if you're a longtime listener, we have talked about before. This is not a fresh new idea. We have definitely discussed it before, but I truly think that just like all of you, 
I am learning new marketing strategies as we go here. And new things are being developed and new things are coming up in the marketing world. And because of that, sometimes we revisit topics that maybe at one point we thought we had fully covered. But guys, with TV marketing, we're never going to fully cover it. I'll tell you that right now. There's so much, so much to learn that we really do need to maybe do a second look, maybe do a third look or a fourth. I'm not promising that's going to happen, but... If I see it helping you in some way, then of course we'll do it. So if you didn't listen to the first episode of this, it was one of our very early on episodes. Definitely go check it out. But for now, get your pen and paper out because we are jumping right in with some television marketing strategies that you can use with your own business. Number one, a publicity stunt. So we talked about earlier the Game of Thrones publicity stunt that sort of took over the world where they had a bus sized dragon head put on a beach somewhere for other people to discover and for newspapers to cover to create buzz about a show. Now, obviously, although I don't know this, you probably don't have the budget to jump a giant, giant head on a beach to promote your product and also what are you selling that that would help you unless you are selling dragons i do not see how that would help you however this marketing strategy still can help you you just need to find your own publicity stunt that will help you generate the media and audience buzz that this game of thrones stunt did as well if you sell coffee perhaps your publicity stunt is making a very big flashy announcement about how your beans are made locally and organically and just talking about how you found your farmers and making a big deal out of it or getting your influencer to make a big deal out of it. Generate buzz in a different way or come up with your own publicity stunt that will positively impact your business because, fair warning guys, a publicity stunt There's a line. There's a line to do it in and there's a line not to do it in. So just make sure you are staying in the positive world and don't create any negatives or any problems for you or your product or your company. Number two, video advertising. So give me a second here for me to really, truly explain what I mean, because of course I want you guys to use video absolutely I want you guys to use video. If you haven't already, we did a whole podcast episode where I taught you how to make a video advertisement. But what I'm talking about here is in the TV world, doing a video advertisement helps promote their product because their product is a video. Whether it's a TV show or a movie or cartoon movie, a drama, a comedy, a love story, it's another episode of Grey's Anatomy. It's a video. There's no way around that. So what I want you guys to do is find a way to promote your product with itself. So promoting a video with a video, promoting coffee beans with coffee beans. Really try to think outside of that marketing box here of how you can make an advertisement that is so unique to your product that no other product could use this form of advertising. Number three, a huge thing that happens in the TV world is press junkets. Now, obviously, you are probably not going to be able to host a press junket for your new product of beans coming out. However, what really happens at those press junkets is the actors have pre-written ideas and lines of things they really want to get across. They have their sound bites ready. So what I want you to do is get in touch with your local media and have sound bites ready for them for what you want to promote about your product. Number four, let your audience experience the story. This was a huge thing that Pretty Little Liars did, and I highly recommend it for anyone out there listening right now, is make your audience feel as though they are part of the world you are creating, that they are actually adding value to it. Because the truth is, they are. Without them, You're not selling anything. You need people to be able to sell from you. So let them experience your story and experience your product in a different and a new way, a way that makes them feel involved and like they are actually participating in the world and the product you are creating. And there are lots of different ways to do that. You can do that 
through social media. You can do that through videos. You can do that through live videos. You can do it through promotional campaigns. You can do it through user-generated content. Whatever it may be, the choice is totally up to you. However, make sure they feel included, make sure they feel valued, and make sure they feel like they are a part of the story. Number five, reviews. Think about it. Every time you have ever started watching a new TV show, what is one of, I'm going ahead and say the top five reasons you have started watching that show? Is it because a friend told you that it was good? Is it because a TV commercial came out that said it's been nominated for an Emmy or some other prestigious award? Is it because the actors went on social media and told you how good the show is and how much they genuinely like the show? Is it because you read a review online? If it was any of those options, let me be frank with you, that's a review. Whether it's your friend, your mother, a TV commercial, a celebrity, a social media account telling you that the show is good... That is a review. And you have started watching the show because of that positive review. So do not underestimate how important reviews truly are to your product and how much they can actually help. So reach out to your customers you already have and get them to record testimonials. Get them to comment on your Google review page. Get them to rate you on Yelp. Because all of those little reviews, they really do help in the big picture. Okay, everyone, we are going to go ahead and take another break from the podcast. But when we come back, we have a few more marketing strategies for you that belong on the silver screen. So stay tuned for more of the GSMC Marketing Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mackenzie Jequish, and I'll be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. everyone and welcome back to the GSMC Marketing Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host Mackenzie Jaquish and how is everyone doing today? Honestly guys, I want to hear from you. Connect with us, connect with us, connect with us. We honestly sometimes it feels like I'm yelling into a void. I want to hear from you. I want to hear your thoughts on our marketing podcast, and I want to hear your thoughts on all of the other amazing podcasts that we host. If you are unfamiliar with the GSMC Podcast Network, let me fill you in on how amazing and incredible the podcast truly is. Let me start with the people who run it. The people who run the podcast are amazing and incredible, and very talented people who are so dedicated to bringing you new and consistent content every single day. And now let's talk about the hosts of the podcast, me included. Every single host of the podcast, from sports to television to lifestyle, we all care so much about the audience and the level of effort and commitment that we have to put into every single episode. Not even have to, that we want to because we understand how important it is for us 
to deliver for you guys and to show up for you guys. And honestly, I loved the GSMC Podcast Network before I started working for them. And I'm going to continue listening for years and years to come. I love the podcast. I love the variety. I love the consistency. And I love the quality of the content we are producing here. And guys, we love your feedback. That is another huge part of what makes this network so great. It's truly, truly the feedback element. We want to hear from you. We want to hear what you like and what you don't like. Honestly, guys, at the start of every episode, I used to do a new segment and then I heard people say they don't like it. They wrote reviews or they reached out through social media saying that they didn't like it. And guys, guess what? It was gone because I truly care about what you guys want to listen to. I want you to feel as if you're being heard. So if you have an idea for a podcast, if you have an idea for an episode or theme or a question you want me to answer, do not hesitate to write it down below and let me know what your thoughts are and what your feelings are. But in return, I will ask that you subscribe to this podcast if you're listening to it and you go check out all the other amazing podcasts that are on the GSMC Podcast Network because let me tell you, there is some amazing content out there that you should be listening to. So go over there, check it out, and then come back and let me know what you found. But for now, let's jump right back into today's episode where we are talking about television show marketing. Question of the day, what is your favorite TV show? My favorite TV show is that 70s show. However, my most favorite TV show that is on right now and is using some compelling marketing tools would definitely be Stranger Things. Now, let me know in the review down below what your favorite TV show is. But for now, why don't you go ahead and take out your pen and paper because we have some more marketing strategies to discuss. Number seven, use social competitions and quizzes. Guys, how many, oh my goodness, how many quiz nights have you been invited to or trivia nights for shows such as The Office, Friends, How I Met Your Mother, Game of Thrones? Guys, there are quiz nights all across the world for shows that have a huge following. And honestly, shows have started to use that as a way to promote their show. How much do you really love How I Met Your Mother? How much do you really know about How I Met Your Mother? Take our quiz and find out. Which friends couple are you and your boyfriend most like? Which friends actress do you dress the most like? Which The Office character would you so totally be? All of those quizzes have nothing to do with your personality, and let's be honest, have nothing to do with the show, but they keep you engaged and they keep you wanting more and more. It's a way to give you content without putting out a new episode. So use social competitions and quizzes to draw up an audience, to draw up engagement without having to release a new product. It is a great way to build a following, build a foundation, and for people to get hooked on your product that they're just learning about now. Number eight, use celebrity and brand partnerships. So on every TV show, at least once a year when it's ratings week, suddenly there will be a big, splashy celebrity guest star. Now, obviously, you don't have a ratings week or a way to have a guest star on your product, but you can have a guest star on your social media on your actual product tag, writing a review for you. Now, you're probably not going to get George Clooney like when he was on Friends, but you can get a local influencer, a local celebrity like your mayor or a teacher, even if you live in a small enough community, or just someone who's known about town as being very respective and having a big following. Use them to promote your product. Here's why. Because they already have a following established. If you are new to the game, then you are being introduced to a following of people who are already dedicated to something or someone. Number two, if you do already have a following, it is a great way to be introduced to a new following and to new people who have maybe never heard of your product before. If you want to know more about influencer marketing, then I did a whole podcast episode on that a few months back. So go over there and check it out because, guys, 
It might be the thing that totally changes your marketing around. Micro-influencers are huge right now. And trust me, they are something that you are going to want to jump on board with. Number nine, persona marketing. Persona marketing is something that I have told you guys about before. It is basically creating a person who was your ideal candidate for your product, who you think you are going to be selling to the most. Now, this is something that TV shows have done for years of here is who we think is going to watch our show. A great example of this is the show Desperate Housewives. They obviously thought the main group of people who would be watching their show were going to be housewives. However, my father can totally stand to tell you that he too loved that show. And I have talked to so many other men who have also said they love the show as well. And me and my sisters love the show and we're not housewives. And it's something that is obviously they were trying to push it in one direction. However, pivoting and moving is always a part of marketing. So what I would encourage you to do is to create a persona, go forward with it, but then always check back to make sure your persona still aligns with your actual target audience. The next one is gifts and memes. Guys, gifts, let's just do this in two separate parts. Gifts are huge for your marketing. The TV show Shits Creek used gifts to the utmost ability. If you searched a GIF, the first four that would pop up, did not matter what you searched, would all be Shits Creek clips of the television show. And in the corner, it would say Shits Creek on Monday nights at 8 p.m. or whenever the date was. They got free advertising through your text messages every single time you sent a GIF. Now, memes, on the other hand, are very similar but slightly different. Basically, you need to find a way to promote your show or your product through a meme by being able to make fun of yourself, which is totally, totally easy to do. A great site to check out would be Netflix is a joke. Their Instagram profile totally makes fun of all the shows that they have, and it'll help you sort of get the humor out of your own product. Okay, everyone, that is it for today's episode of the GSMC Marketing Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Mackenzie Jaquish, and I'll see you next time. You've been listening to the GSMC Marketing News Podcast, part of the GSMC Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcasts on SoundCloud, Stitcher, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to any podcast app, and you'll find all of the shows from the GSMC Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, from business news to weird news, you'll find it all on the GSMC Podcast Network. You can also follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.